give him a warm round of applause. Reese Wynn. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so my, uh, Dwayne Reese. I am Reese, and I'm here today, as Ben said, to give a developer's guide to working with marketing teams. So as a very brief introduction, as Ben did so wonderfully, started with WordPress in 2016. Uh, I then worked as a search engine optimizer slash WordPress developer for an agency based in North Wales uh, until 2010. I then moved to Manchester in 2010 to work as a pure digital marketer for a digital marketing agency. Uh, was there for two years, returned to WordPress development for a marketing agency in 2012, and then I went to freelance about this time last year. So what does that mean? Well, it means I'm a developer who kind of knows a bit about marketing. And when I'm a developer who kind of knows a bit about marketing, it kind of puts you in a weird position. So there's like a, there's a few big conferences, there's Brighton SEO next month. I go to a few marketing conferences, and I go there, and I start speaking to people, and they look at me like how the aliens look at the claw in the original Toy Story, because it's all like, ooh, like that. And it's, it's really, really good. Um, and there are people who introduce me, and they go, hey, this is my friend Reese. He's a developer who knows SEO. And they go, ooh, that's really, really good. And eventually, we start a conversation, because eventually what happens is you end up with something that looks a little bit like this, because it leads to a conversation about previous experience working with often really, really good, talented developers, and the fact they've been burnt in the past, and it sucks. So, and it's not necessarily bad developers or bad marketers, but bad communication. So by the end of this discussion, you'll hopefully be able to work on a team and achieve amazing things like what Wales did in Euro 2016. No, I have still not shut up about that. Right. So why should you do it? Well, if you get them on your side, they're great people to know because they help a lot. They're a great source of inspiration and ideas. Um, you're going to be hearing all over this weekend some great talks from developers, um, all talk about some weird and cool uh, stuff you can do in developments with like cool new technologies. Having a marketer on your side can help focus those ideas and give you really cool ideas and say, oh, actually, I can use, for example, React on this, and it's really, really cool. Or I can use like this really cool API to achieve this goal for a marketer. And it's great because you get to play around with all this stuff. And they will also go into bath for you. Um, a lot of developers um, work to budgets. And usually the budgets are the same as marketing budgets. And sometimes some, some of those get cut. So having a marketer going to bat for you saying, we really like working with this developer, is a really, really cool thing. Plus what you do seems like magic. It's great. Um, it can be easy to impress, but it can be really easy to frustrate them. Right. I'm going to find a better way to drink some water. Ooh. These are great. Oh, sorry. I've got a trip on that. So, um, what are marketers judged on? Marketers are judged on KPIs. Now, what are KPIs? Key performance indicators. When a marketing uh, strategy is, pro is produced, there are things called KPIs, which is, this is what it is judged on. So to judge the success or the failure of a marketing strategy is those KPIs. Now, they're usually things like sales increase, traffic increase, rankings improving. Um, they're not things, and I love Yoast for loads, it's not things like the traffic light in Yoast. Um, that's, that's, it's a really, really good indicator, but it's generally not in marketing strategies. Um, find out which ones you can control of the KPIs and see if you can assist any. Now, they'll generally fall into strategies that are on-page changes. So three examples, uh, conversion rate, so any improvements to the user experience uh, to make a conversion easier. Uh, rankings, um, you may not think rankings, but Google has said that rankings uh, can be improved with improving the speed of the site. So if you improve the speed of the site, you may be able to improve rankings. Not guaranteed, but you can do. And click-through rates, so this is basically people clicking on the site through Google. Uh, Things like improving the site architecture, make sure the right keywords are ranking, for the right pages are ranking for the right keywords. Um, that can really help in search engines. Now, the problem is you won't be able to control all of it. So, for example, conversion rate, if the marketing agency will do a poor pay per click campaign, um, the conversion rate will tank. If, ranking, if uh, the marketing team builds really dodgy links, the rankings will drop. Um, and the click-through rate if the marketing team prioritizes the incorrect page. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is, B, 
be aware of them, but don't be judged. Right. Usually, when you first get to work with a marketing agency, you get what is known as the list. And the list is usually produced at the beginning of the project. Everybody's friends with each other. Everybody's really, really happy. We've got this great team together. And the marketing team will go off and they'll produce this list of everything that's wrong in this website that you've probably built. And they just pick through it and decided that there are lots of problems. And they used to do it with such vim and vigor. And it's really, really happy and it's really, really excited. And then you get it and then go, <sighs> OK. Because it's usually quite long and it's usually quite uh, detailed. Now, what you need to do when, if you get the list is ask for it to be prioritized. And usually, they'll go away, and they're really, really nice, and they prioritize it for you. Sometimes, they'll go, oh, all of it's a priority, which is not great, because if all, everything's a priority, nothing is a priority. So you may have to prioritize it for them. So to do that, you refer back to those three letters I'll talk about, KPIs. So, at this point, it's very useful to get access to the client's Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools access. Uh, to get access to the Google Web, yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, to get access to it, because then you can start prioritizing for them and making suggestions. So I'm going to use the three examples of KPIs that you can uh, control, and some things you can do in Google Analytics and Google Webmaster Tools. So, for example, to improve conversions, that's turned out better than I thought. Um, if, you, if the KPI is to um, improve conversions, if you go to Google Analytics and go to behavior, site content, and landing pages, if the marketing agency has goals set up for that client, and they should, um, you can view conversion rates of landing pages. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's the top bar. It says goal set one and e-commerce. I don't know if you see it. I'll share them slides after. If you click on one of those, you can set goals into groups. So for example, one, one goal set could be you know, any sort of inquiry, so things like um, filling out a contact form, clicking on a phone number, things like that. One could be, um, do they sign up to the social, do they sign up to your Twitter, your Facebook, um, sign up to your newsletter. And there is also a special one, which is e-commerce, which is, have they, do they actually make a sale? So you can kind of uh, group it by those goals. So if you click on one of those, um, you can see uh, how much traffic each page get, how many sessions they get, and also the conversion rate. So the conversion rate for this goal set is 2.97. Um, and lot of the, most of it comes through uh, one or two pages. So a good idea is to prioritize improving the conversion rates of pages that already have some conversions, um, but more importantly, a high number of sessions. So for example, in this example, you can't really see it here, um, one page, uh, has a 100% conversion rate, but there's only three visitors to it. So I'm not probably going to be worried too much about it. Um, the one below, which I haven't actually, can't actually see the conversion rate on, but has 210 sessions. So that would be a good, uh, good use of my time, is to focus on that page. Improving rankings. Similarly, in Google Analytics, uh, look at pages that are getting a lot of traffic, and go to behavior, site speed, and speed suggestions. You can then filter it further. So for example, you can filter by organic traffic, or uh, well, you should filter it on organic traffic. So only traffic that comes from search engines, because that's the traffic that is ranking, and that's the traffic that matters. Um, you can also filter it by device, so mobile or desktop. And then there's a link um, for page speed suggestions. If you click on that link, it'll give you some page speed suggestions. Now, I don't like clicking on that link. I prefer to get the URL, which is in the left-hand column, and put it into something like Google PageSpeed Tool, um, or Google Lighthouse, or um, GT Metrics. But I'm going to talk about it from um, the PageSpeed Tool, um, because Lighthouse is pretty similar. Um, you run Lighthouse locally rather than PageSpeed Insight, which runs online, because you can do things like throttle traffic. Um, so put the URL of your chosen page into this page, and then click on Analyze. What then happens is it analyzes the page speed, and it will give you some really useful things. First of all, it'll give you a score, which you can't actually see here. Ignore the score. It, it's, it's an arbitrary number. Um, look at things like um, the speed it takes to your time to interactive, which is how long it takes for uh, the user to be able to interact with said page. Um, 
But what's really useful is that it will also give you suggestions. And in PageSpeed now, it gives you things like suggestions focused on WordPress. So for example, on this page, 2.2 uh, seconds was loading JavaScript and CSS on this page that not necessarily needed to be loaded. So what is suggested is like saying, right, split the JavaScript and CSS into two separate files, load the important stuff at the top, load the stuff we don't need until later in the page at the bottom, and here's a list of WordPress plugins that can do it for you. Um, that's really, really useful. Okay, next up, uh, the final one uh, was the click-through rate. In Google Webmaster Tools, this is. Click on uh, Webmaster Tools and Performance. Get a page URL, so any page which has a lot of traffic from Google Analytics, and make sure you filter it by the, the, that page, so you only show traffic for said page. And then filter by uh, click-through ratio, ascending. So all these phrases for my page um, get zero, which is probably a bad example. But you, these are all pages for, that go to the home page and see if there's more relevant keyword to rank for said page. So for example, um, on my personal site, I have um, a maintenance, like a maintenance package page for WordPress, so update plugins and things like that. When the home page ranks, the click-through ratio from Google drops really, really quickly. Um, if, if the dedicated page ranks, the click-through ratio increases quite a lot. So see if there's a more relevant page to rank for certain keywords. So for example, this is actually the home page. The second example, WordPress maintenance packages gets a click-through ratio of zero, and it's to the home page. So the chances are I want to focus on that keyword to go to the proper maintenance package page, so therefore it ranks better, and more people will click for it. Um, you know, it's a more relevant search result. Um, it is quite a long process, this, so you probably only want to uh, you know, do it for a couple of keywords. For example, one of the keywords there, SEO freelancer Manchester I rank for. Don't care about that because I don't offer SEO. So don't focus on that, but focus on keywords that you can rank on. If all else fails, estimate time and cost for each task. This is a really, really useful way to kind of focus uh, minds because once you come to them with a bill, they generally say what's important and what isn't. Right, number three. Soft skills. Um, this is becoming more and more important. So soft skills is the ability to communicate and things like that. Um, communication and speaking to marketers can make the difference between a good experience and a bad experience. So it's a very, very important skill. And it's beginning to get more focus in the WordPress community, which is great, superb. Um, this is something that happened about three, you know, four or five years ago. Um, I used to come to WordPress conferences and work camps and meetups, and I somebody would speak to me about SEO, and, they, and then somebody else would interject and go, all you need to do is write good content and you will rank. No, no, that's not true. Um, it was really frustrating because it's almost like saying, uh, if you run really, really fast, you can win Olympic gold. It's true, you can, but you're kind of missing everything in the middle. So try to avoid saying that. Luckily, um, this, is, this is dying, so it's great. Um, next up. Um, avoid micromanaging. Uh, it's annoying, you hate it, and I hate it, and everybody hates it. Um, right, micromanaging, this comes in two forms, micromanaging the client and micromanaging yourself. Uh, regarding micromanaging myself, I kind of give like twice daily updates to my clients at the absolute most, um, with the exception of one client who um, demands three. But apart from that, everybody else kind of uh, is like twice daily updates, just a, hey, it's lunchtime, here's what I've been doing this morning, or hey, and it's usually something in a Slack message, it's not even like an email. Um, micromanaging the client, if something is going to change on the site, make them aware of it as soon as you think it's going to change. Don't wait until you actually need it. Um, and you know, and then you begin chasing every hour, and it just becomes really, really frustrating because there's chances are uh, there's nothing they can do. A um, couple of exa well, example recently, um, we did a non WordPress to WordPress site conversion. As soon as it became obvious that the URL structure had to change, we told the marketing team because it was just like, this is not going to work within WordPress. I mean, I actually didn't know this, but we were supposed to be changing it anyway. Um, but grateful because then they could prepare a bunch of redirects and go, right, okay, we want this page to go to here, this page to go to here, here's a list, here's a CSV, 
you can run with it, and it's great. Um, I also like saying, right, I need this. It's not a blocker right now, but if you get it sorted, that will be great. Um, that's another thing I kind of say. Um, ask why and explain why. What do I mean by this? If a request is made that you don't necessarily agree with, and it happens, rather than saying no, ask why it needs to be done. Because um, either one of three things will happen. You can either get some understanding on why it needs to be done, which is great because then you can you know, uh, put it in. You can, uh, by them ask, uh, explaining why it needs to be done, um, they may realize it's a good idea. It's not a good idea, so that kind of, um, you know, it kind of focuses them and kind of go, actually, not really that important. Or they explain why and you still disagree. If that happens, then you explain why it's a bad idea to them. Don't just say computer says no, uh, because it, it really, really isn't helpful. Um, generally, what's often perceived in our world, or outside our world, as a 10 minute job isn't a 10 minute job. Um, and another example I had recently on a project a client uh, wanted to change all the ID numbers on a WordPress site like all the post IDs, uh, because we were getting, to, it was, there was quite a lot of post types, and one post type in particular was kind of um, pushing to like 10,000 or 15,000, and it was just like, we kind of want smaller numbers, and it's like, actually, what you think may be a quick job actually isn't. So, yeah, we found a solution for that one. Um, next up, don't assume knowledge. I do this talk to marketers, but the other way around. Uh, and there's a slide in there where I said, the worst three words that a marketer can say to a developer is, can you just? The worst three words for a developer to say to a marketer is, can't you just? Um, it can be dangerous to assume knowledge. It's a very, very difficult skill, and I have been guilty of it. I've been guilty of this this weekend. Um, it just can come across quite frustrating, it comes across as lazy. Now, the other side is you over-explain things. Um, I kind of think that's a better thing than assuming knowledge because then you just kind of, I just find it really frustrating. Um, and everybody's kind of working off different knowledge levels. I've been freelancing for a year, it's going great. I know very little about SSH. Cannot SSH into a server at all. Always get struggling. Um, and I'll admit that right now. Uh, an example I gave recently, this was for a client, and what we were doing was we were um, creating a new theme for the client, but we had to use some theme, uh, some fiat files from the old theme. Uh, I sent an email and said, can you send over the, uh, the old theme? They immediately fired back and said, can't you just download it from the server? Um, I can. It's a fairly straightforward thing to do. Uh, the problem is, I didn't have FTP access. Uh, I didn't have SSH access. I didn't have any sort of access at all. Um, I also, uh, they had this weird kind of Git versioning system on the server, and so you had to go to like a really long uh, folder, and it was really, really difficult. Um, what would have been a two-minute two job for them actually turned out to be um, about two hours for me, and it was just really, really hard. Uh, okay, fine. next point is uh, the relationship between the clients, the marketers, and the developers. Uh, offer to be a liaison. Uh, this is a win-win-win situation. It's funny because of my last name. Uh, if you speak to somebody on behalf of clients, you can help make you know, the relationship better. So it benefits you uh, because it saves time. It also makes you a little bit indispensable, which is superb because marketing but you know budgets get changed. Uh, it benefits the client uh, because things get fixed a bit quicker. And it benefits the marketing agency because there's less responsibility for them. So who should you liaise with? Well, three good examples. Any sort of in-house developers a client may have, any uh, designers that could be, you could be working with on a project because if you're going to be building a theme that somebody else is designing, you kind of want to you know, we, they want, you know, you want it in a format you can understand, so you may want to speak directly to them. And hosting companies as well, although reputable hosting companies uh, will not speak, to, you have to kind of go through a client first of all um, to make sure that you can speak to them. Um, it may not always be possible this, uh, due to NDAs and whatever, but it's kind of, a, if you can, it's a good thing to do. Um, 
agree to boundaries. Every single project that kind of goes wrong at some point, boundaries have been crossed. Um, I worked, this is in a previous job now, uh, I worked with a marketing, a, um, an in-house marketer for a client, and literally she would send, they would send an email, and within 45 minutes, I would receive a phone call saying, why has this not been done? Um, the problem was, we didn't agree to boundaries at the time, uh, at the start, and as soon as I got the phone call, I immediately became defensive and negative, because chances are, didn't read the email. It's 45 minutes. Um, if you agree to boundaries before working with people, then you can kind of, you know, not necessarily hide behind them, but it puts you less uh, as a defensive and negative um, uh, <laughs> point. So um, I try and I, tr I try and uh, you know try and agree to boundaries beforehand and SLAs and things like that. So that's a really good thing to do. Um, have one point of contact as well. Uh, Problem arises with more than one contact on both sides, um, especially if you're following a process um, for you know bug reports and things like that. If you have one person who can kind of prioritize it at their end and one person who prioritizes it at your end, um, it just makes life a lot easier. Usually, um, if you're a freelancer, obviously it'll be yourself, but if you're in an agency, they'll try and get a project manager involved. And the final point-ish is document everything you change. Very important, if you document it somewhere, even an email or a Git repository, um, as long as you document every single change, it's great. One of the cool things you can also do with Google Analytics is you can annotate in Google Analytics. So if you put a new version of a theme up and the rankings tank, um, you can see that this is when it happened kind of thing. So you can begin to idea on how to put things right and things like that. Right, what to do when things go wrong? Because everything invariably does. Um, Try not to be confrontational. That really doesn't help. Uh, don't try and blame people. Don't try and blame them, uh, especially in front of a client. That's really, really not helpful. Um, use documentation to refer to decisions made and why things were done. When you're writing documentation at the time, and if you document, th if you document things when decisions are made, you generally write it in a more neutral, more kind of calm language because whatever has gone wrong hasn't gone wrong yet. So if you, if you refer back to the documentation, you can kind of go, okay, this is why it was done. And it's not usually, and nobody's really blamed for it, so it's a really good thing to do. Um, I've hidden behind the agreements at times, not always the most intelligent thing, but sometimes when things go really, really wrong, you can kind of go, look, you know, it's the weekend, I can't really look at this right now. Um, not always smart, and this is when begin, things begin to go wrong. And when things get to the point of, you know what, this is not going to work. It's far better just to come to an agreement for exit uh, if the worst comes to the worst. If you come to an agreement for exit, then you can kind of say, right, this is where our agreement ends. Um, the worst thing you can do is to go to the client and go to the marketing agency because invariably you'll get an email four or five months down the line and people asking where you are. So don't try and do that. If, if something's not working, just come to an agreement for an exit and then go from there. Don't want to end on a sad note, so what to do when things go right, because projects do go right, it's wonderful. Um, recommend them. If, they, if you've been working with an external marketing agency, recommend them to people. Um, I have three that I will happily recommend if anybody needs a marketing agency to work with, one of which will work with massive budgets, one of which will work with a slightly smaller one and a freelancer kind of thing. Um, the cool thing about that is if they if everything goes well for you as a developer, if you work with the external marketing agency, that, that, then they'll probably work with you on this project, um, which is great. Um, keep an eye on the team when they, wherever they go on LinkedIn, uh, especially for team members you enjoy working with because people move on. People change jobs. They could work in another marketing agency. That could be, even though it's a different marketing agency to one you recommended, if you're working with the same team members, that's a superb thing. Um, there are a couple of marketers I've worked with in four different jobs. <laughs> that's just the way it is, because we just kind of end up in the same place, and people recommend each other. It's great. And if you become really friendly with them, um, ask them for, for opinions on your own site, usually you know, coffee or a beer. They're, they're, a lot of marketers uh, like giving their opinions on things. Um, 
usually for the price of a coffee and a beer, which is a lot cheaper than what they usually cost. So, uh, thank you very much, and I'm happy to take some questions. Excellent. So, uh, am I on? Hello. Good stuff. Uh, <laughs> wonderful talk, Rhys. Um, so, if anyone's got any questions, we've got a microphone that's kicking about. Hands up in the air. There we go, just from the back there. That's a really good talk. Okay. So, <laughs> I'm an ex-agency project person, technical project person, okay. now marketer. Yeah. Right? And um, I, I thought that was like a really interesting insight. And one of the things that kind of came up that I was thinking about as I was watching your talk was, um, what can marketers take responsibility for a little bit more? Because I've been there in an agency where they've got developers to do everything, like even yeah. redirects. And can you add a new... Because we're talking about SEO specifically yeah. here. Can you add a new sitemap? And these are things that, with a little bit of training, marketers could do potentially, right? Yeah. Um, it's a tricky one. I, so my kind of rule is that anything that is technical I would probably like to do so even things like I mean redirects are an interesting one because in WordPress you can you know there are plugins like 301 redirects and things like that I like using them but the problem is is like for me and again mileage may vary for me I prefer all redirects to be in one place and I usually put them in like hasty access and things like that which is a little bit more technical um, things you can kind of do if you prepare like a redirect file which is just a CSV um, any competent developer should be able to just like turn that into like a you know a, something they can put in a hasty access file. Anything which is preparing, and 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 the other thing is don't leave things open to interpretation. Um, I kind of say to clients, look, send me the URL. Don't send me, you know, go to this page because as a developer, I have you know. Hopefully, quite a lot of clients. Um, so, so anything that you don't leave anything open to chance, because if if you leave it open to chance, things will take longer to get done. Um, because uh, you know, I it'll be an email back and forth, or I may do it to the wrong page. Um, anything like you know, page titles, anything you can, anything with a WordPress plugin like a Yoast WordPress SEO. Um, to to a degree, probably not redirects, but anything you can do to to kind of help. Um, those kind of things are kind of useful. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> dun, dun. Okay. Um, so, obviously, agencies all have their own project management styles, and they all have their own project management tooling. Yeah. And you flitter between the various different companies. Uh, so, presumably, you have your own internal project management style and tooling. How do you sort of marry the two so that they don't start separating and people think that you're, they're further along in one process because it says so in their um, The internal ones that I use, so my project management is, um, I have Trello boards and things like that. Whatever the client uses, that's the one that I will probably focus on. Um, the Trello boards are there to kind of manage a day-to-day -day and it's, it's, I don't, I don't, want to share that because it works for me and it's, it, it, and it's, quite a, it's, it's kind of complex but you know it's, it's one of those things that kind of just works so I always try if, if the client says you know for example use Asana or use Monday.com I will be using whatever they, whatever they choose to, to work on sometimes they have there's a separate one between the client and the marketer um, so I only and the client doesn't know that I'm working on the project at all as a, as a freelancer, so that can also be that. So whatever, whatever the, either the marketing agency or the, generally the marketing agency, whatever the marketing agency works on, that's the one I, I will be focused on, um, and I have my own internal um, tools uh, myself. Any more questions, folks? Cool, good stuff. Well, Reese, that was a wonderful talk. Please, everyone, put your hands together for Reese Wynn. Thank you very much.